This time I want to share with you the last silent feature length Australian film ever made, but also the first to be based on an Australian comic strip. It is an historical document that showcases parts of Sydney that are sadly now lost, and it beautifully captures the innocence and mischief of youth. A film for simpler times. The Kid Stakes from 1927. This film is based on Fatty Finn, a comic strip originally known as Fat and His Friends, created in 1923 to rival the successful comic strip Us Fellas, which featured another Australian icon of the period, Ginger Meggs. Fatty Finn's creator Sid Nichols was a professionally trained artist whose first published work appeared in the International Socialist in 1912, and soon after his cartoons appeared in The Bulletin, The Australian Worker and Australasian Seaman's Journal. Leading to the political left, Nichols also contributed cartoons to Direct Action, which was published by the Industrial Workers of the World. In 1914, one of Nichols' cartoons caused his publisher, Tom Barker, to be sentenced to 12 months in jail for publishing material prejudicial to recruitment. In 1919, Nichols created art titles for a number of films, including Raymond Longford's The Sentimental Bloke, and from 1920 he did a stint in the US to study art title design for motion pictures. On his return to Sydney in 1923, he joined the staff of the Sydney Evening News as a senior artist where he was asked to create Fatty Finn. There's little doubt that Fatty Finn was highly influenced by the sentimental bloke, CJ Dennis's classic story of a sentimental tough guy from a poor inner city neighbourhood, with the strip coming to be recognised as perhaps the best drawn comic in Australia while vying with Ginger Meggs for the most popular. Sid Nichols appears at the start of the film drawing a picture of Fatty Finn which comes to life on screen. The film adaption was written and directed by actor and writer Tal Ordell, a real journeyman who had studied drawing and painting at J.S. Watkins' popular art school. He had befriended both Henry Lawson and bush poet Will Ogilvie. He'd made his stage debut in 1901, then spent several years as an itinerant bush worker before returning to the Sydney stage in 1908. Between 1913 and 1916, he played mainly humorous roles in stock melodramas at the Theatre Royal in Brisbane, where he was given the opportunity to stage a play that he wrote, A Little Home in the Valley. Classed as medically unfit when he tried to enlist, Tal was rejected for military service during the First World War. Between 1917 and 1921, Odell played both Dad and Dave Hayseed in different films, went on stage tours and performed in numerous plays, including a Shakespearean season with Alan Wilkie. His screen roles in 1921 included The Villain in Silks and Saddles and The Gentleman Bushranger and The Hero in While the Billy Boils. He directed his own two real comedy, Cows and Cuddles, and between engagements he frequently returned to the bush, always accompanied by his terrier. His popularity blossomed on a wave of enthusiasm for bush characters. Deep down, he was a bushy himself. He appeared in Vaudeville in Brisbane in 1922 and had great success as Ginger Mick in a stage production of The Sentimental Bloke. His three-act play, Kangaroo Flat, ran for 10 weeks in Melbourne from January of 1926. It failed in Sydney, but then he managed to tour it across the entire country. And the following year, he wrote and directed The Kid Stakes. Tal's son, Robin Pop Odell, was six years old when he played the role of Fatty Finn. It's a very natural performance where he appears to effortlessly lead all the other kid actors who are likely equally inexperienced. But every one of them is fabulous. This was Robin's only screen appearance, but later in 1934, he again joined his father, this time on ABC Radio, for chats that soon developed into a children's serial, Wattle Town, that ran for five years. Many of the locations for the kid stakes were in the Sydney suburb of Woolloomooloo, with a number of those locations still recognisable today. For those that we have lost, this film serves as an historical document of what they once were or once looked like. Woolloomooloo was chosen for the majority of the location shooting as it is the setting of the comic strip, with additional locations in Potts Point used for the inclusion of Algie Snoops, a posh character who is not just critical to Fatty Finn's story and his ultimate success, but who also demonstrates Fatty is an everyman, loved by one and all, and uniting all social strata. The film's famous finale, The Goat Race, was filmed about a thousand kilometres away in Rockhampton, Queensland, because New South Wales had banned goat racing a year earlier. The film premiered at the Winter Garden Theatre in Brisbane on the 9th of June 1927, and although not especially successful at the time of its release, The Kid Stakes is now widely regarded as one of the major achievements of Australia's silent cinema. Ordell sold the remake rights to England and had discussions about making a talking version in 1930, but this never eventuated, making this the only feature film that Ordell ever wrote or directed. 
The film was thought lost until it was rediscovered in 1952. At that time, all of the known prints had been cut into two real comedies. Um, these and the residual night rate materials were rescued by members of the Sydney University Film Group in 1953. It was re-edited into a single, seemingly complete version and presented in a revival season in September of 1954 in the Union Hall at Sydney University. Some of the original cast were on stage for the presentation. The film we have access to today is that re-edited, reconstructed version. A new negative was made and subsequently purchased by the National uh, Library of Australia, the precursor to the National Film and Sound Archive. The Sydney University Film Group also paid for a fresh 16mm print to be taken to London by Mary Field, the children's film advocate who was visiting Australia at the time, and it remains in the National Film Archive in Britain. The film has since become highly regarded as a dinky-dye Aussie comedy and a valuable record of the city of Sydney's locations and culture of the day, as well as documenting some of the extensive body of work by the artist Sid Nichols. In 1980, The Kid Stakes was remade as Fatty Finn. It went on to gross $1.1 million at the Australian box office and was nominated for seven Australian Film Institute awards, winning for Best uh, Achievement in Costume Design and Best Original Music Score. Sydney journalist and screenwriter Bob Ellis produced a book of the movie, The Adventures of Fatty Finn, with illustrations taken from Nichols' original drawings. So a number of good reasons to watch this particular film. It is a real step back in time to a forgotten Sydney, some fascinating locations that we can no longer visit except on screen. We get to briefly see a side of the Australian character we seem to have sadly also left behind. And it's a fun film to watch, not least for how much fun the child actors are clearly having on screen. Please don't be deterred because it's a silent film. Uh, what it lacks in dialogue, it makes up for in action and uh, a fun and enjoyment. So what I suggest you do is that you uh, go to our website, uh, you know, go to our virtual screenings page, find the link to this particular film, click on it and watch it, um, see what you think. And as always, we'd love you to come back, share your thoughts about the film. Uh, and again, whether or not you would recommend it for other people to watch as well. And then we'll see you back again in the not too distant future for our next classic films review. See you next time.